After one year, it's more difficult. I'm still angry because we didn't get the justice yet. The government received multiple warnings over years, over, over years that it was there and that it was stored um, improperly and that it posed a danger to the city. That's not negligent. Or it's negligence so extreme that, it, that it's, a, it's criminal. Oh my God! The Lebanese authorities seem either unwilling or incapable of holding high-level officials to account. A year on, Beirut remains deeply scarred by the blast that killed over 200 people, wounded thousands more and left tens of thousands of Lebanese homeless. The cityscape remains pockmarked by wreckage. Losing Gaia is not just losing a sister, it's losing a best friend. Mariana Fadulian heads a committee of more than 100 families who lost loved ones. The younger sister Gaia was 29 years old when she died in hospital from her injuries. She got hit by the blast and then she had a bleeding, an internal bleeding. Not far from Gaia's portrait, the face of two-year-old Australian Isaac Olers. Isaac is everywhere in our house. I still haven't come to terms with what's happened. Isaac was hit by glass from the blast while sitting in his high chair. Now living in Australia with her husband Craig after the birth of their second son, Ethan, Sarah says she has one overwhelming emotion. Anger, of course. Um, anger on behalf of Isaac, who was just a sweet, beautiful, innocent child. Anger on behalf of all the Lebanese people who are continuing to face uh, crisis after crisis. The almost three tonnes of highly explosive ammonium nitrate had been stored at the port since 2014. The government and military had received multiple reports. This tragedy brought to light the deep failings of the administration and this is the reason why, if there's any lesson to be learned from this dreadful disaster, from this tragedy for the Lebanese people, it's that we see the need to rebuild the state and strengthen the administration, specifically its failings in terms of its competence, in terms of negligence. A judge investigating the blast did charge more than 30 people, mostly low-level port workers. But his attempt to charge the acting Prime Minister and three former ministers with negligence failed when they refused to be questioned, claiming immunity. What we found over and over again in our interviews with political officials from across the political spectrum is that nobody is willing to take responsibility for this corruption and mismanagement that ultimately led us to the blast. Court replaced the first investigating judge. The second is yet to make any substantial progress. Sarah Copland has been lobbying for a UN-led investigation. The Lebanese government promised there would be an investigation within five days. Um, we're coming up on a year and there are still no answers. In our interviews with the families of the victims and with the Lebanese public, very few of them trust that the Lebanese judiciary will, able, will be able to uncover the full truth, particularly given um, evidence that very senior political intelligence and military leaders are implicated in the blast. There's only one investigative judge leading the investigation on one of the biggest crimes in Lebanon's history, and he has two trainee judges with him. Uh, and I think they share one computer between them. In the months after the blast, Lebanon endured COVID, an economic crisis, widespread protests and political chaos. We no longer have the means that a fully functional government would have at its disposal and find ourselves in a very difficult situation. We are well aware that the real problem has to do with a lack of reforms. 
a state whose administration, whose officials are not appointed through cronyism and specifically denominational cronyism that we have to endure every day and against which I have fought a great deal. We're not under any illusions that you know, accountability for the blast will solve all of Lebanon's problems, but at least it will show that high-level officials can be held accountable for a crime as devastating as the Beirut blast that destroyed half of the capital city. Lebanon, yeah, it is a failed state. So nothing's good. But Mariana still hopes for Lebanon's sake the local investigation succeeds. Otherwise, she says there's no reason to live there. They have to try and they have to find a way to get justice in Lebanon. If we cannot find any, the, like, uh, any positivity here or any answers here, for me it's better to leave this country and go outside and live somewhere else. We will not forget, we will not stop. <laughs> we are continuing till the end, till we get the justice and see, seeing them paying for what they did. Justice will not bring Isaac back, that is just a fact. We live with that every day and we will for the rest of our lives. And we did everything we could to get justice for him and that the world knows that what happened to him was wrong. They blew up a city and the world has moved on. And that's not right. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.